Matt and Cynthia for the kindest welcome and thank you all here today for coming out and supporting us in this community and preventing Alzheimer's in the future. So um, I feel really grateful too that we've had such nice weather and we're expanding beyond the tent which is amazing to see. Um, and so as Matt alluded to and Cynthia, I wanted to talk today a little bit about how you can strengthen your mental and physical self. And I think sport has taught me so much about that and it can be carried into everyday life things, whether it's a career goal, a family goal, a personal goal, or an athletic dream to become an Olympian. And thank you to the Memory Clinic and Faster Skier for making this all possible and the support of SMST2. So I wanted to give a little intro of what our sport is in case maybe you aren't familiar with cross-country skiing. Um, but we're assuming a lot here, but we have people coming from all over. So this is a clip of the Olympics in 2022 Beijing. This is a skate sprint and um, I'm on the right in the, fr in the near the front. Um, but what we do is very physically demanding. It takes cardio, endurance, strength, power, speed, and agility. And I think that's what's really cool about cross-country skiing is that you're challenged in so many different ways. And there's always something you can improve on because it's so demanding. So this is just a little glimpse into what cross-country skiing is like. Um, it was very frigid at the games, but thankfully cross-country skiing keeps you warm in the winter. And so I think it's one of the best sports you can do year round. Um, so I just wanted to share a little bit of a clip of what we do in case you maybe aren't familiar with cross-country skiing. Um, but just a little glimpse into like an Olympic dream becoming a reality. And so many people may know me as an Olympian or a cross-country skier and that's what my identity is associated with, which is very much a big part of my identity. But really, the where my identity lies is just in the outdoors. I am really big fan of being in the outdoors and sharing that with other people. And that's what really brought me into cross country skiing. I love to backcountry ski with family and friends, mountain bike with friends, um, mushroom forage in the forest with my German mother, um, cross country ski with my Stratton teammates and go hiking and see what there is out in nature. And I think that's what's so incredible about the outdoors is you get to see so much of the world that if you're physically capable it allows you to see things that other people can't see and experience these amazing um, happy moments and highs out there. And so that's what really is at the core of who I am. And on the outside, it might be a ski racer, but on the inside, it's really just being active outside in nature and sharing that experience with others. So the ski dream started since I could walk. Um, when at first I was in the ski sled and then as soon as I could stand on my two feet, I was immediately put on skis because I was restless in the ski carriage. And I grew up outside of Boston in Waltham, Massachusetts, skiing on the famous Weston Golf Course, which if you've been there before, this picture on the right is the biggest hill there is on the golf course. They call it the Flatlanders for a reason. Um, but it didn't take much. It was a snow making little white strip of snow on a green pass, patch of grass. And that's where my ski dream began. And it was just, again, I wanted to go to ski practice originally because my grandparents bribed me with gummy bears and hot chocolate. Um, and, but later it turned into, ooh, I wanna go hang out with my friends and be active outside in the winter and get all my energy out because I couldn't sit still longer than one minute in class. And where really the skiing was influenced by my German family. My entire family comes from Germany and I always thought of skiing as a family activity. We would go over every Christmas to spend time with family and over the holidays our Christmas tradition was going skiing, cross country skiing as a family on Christmas morning. So no matter how old or young you were, we all skied together as a family. So on the left is pictured is my grandfather who actually also has Alzheimer's and is my personal connection to the memory clinic because I've become really passionate about learning more about that as I've experienced it um, in my own personal life and he's one of the him and his my, and my grandmother taught me how to cross-country ski so it's really dear to my heart and I have my aunts and my uncles and my parents and even my younger cousins in this picture so Cross-country skiing from the beginning was really a family activity that later turned into an Olympic ski dream. 
but it wasn't just a ski dream. As a kid, I wanted to be a professional uh, WNBA player or soccer player or swimmer or any kind of Olympian. I loved every sport imaginable and skiing wasn't my first original choice. I was really set on basketball, but as a kid, it was just, again, being really active and an excuse to go hang out with friends and do fun activities and get my restless energy out. And so, for me, um, the ski dream came a lot later than maybe most people expected. And I think that's kind of um, interesting to share because I think people think you're born into it. And maybe Matt spoke to my uh, talents of being a skier when I was young, but I didn't decide on ski racing until maybe sophomore year of high school when I was 15 or 16 that, oh, maybe this is something I want to do someday. And so it's never too late to get into cross-country skiing. And I would say I even fell on the early side of it. So you may wonder, okay, I played all these sports. How did I end up being a professional skier as my career in Southern Vermont? And it, these are my main takeaways from what I've learned from skiing. And that's dream big, set goals, build a support system, go out and actually do it and persevere through the challenges. And that's what I'm gonna talk about a little bit today. And it all starts with the dream. And that dream can be a personal goal of getting outside and being active with your grandparents for three days a week. Or it can be becoming an Olympic athlete or becoming a community leader. It doesn't have to be being a professional athlete. And I think these things that sport and skiing have taught me really carry through any type of goal you really want to achieve in life. So this is probably one of my favorite ski memories to date. Raise your hand if you maybe watched this race this year. Well, if you're raising your hand, thank you for cheering us on because Jesse and I and our whole Stratton team felt the love from very far away in Slovenia. And for those of you guys who don't know what this is, this is my first ever World Champs medal um, where I got to team up with Jesse Diggins, who's my teammate and close friend. But if you told Julia Curran 10 years ago that I would be one, teammates with Jesse, two, rooming with her three years straight for four and a half months in a row, and uh, three, teaming up with her in a team sprint, and four, getting onto a world championship podium with her, I wouldn't have believed it. But that's the power of dreaming big, and chasing dreams, and adjusting them, and pushing beyond what you think is possible, because belief is everything. And so, as we talk about goal setting, I actually wanted to invite up my teammate, Ben Ogden, who hopefully many of you know as the local legend, growing up in Langer, Vermont. Um, he's the true local here. Jesse and I maybe have adopted ourselves as Vermonters and Strattoners, but Vermont really claims Ben. And um, he's accomplished some amazing things, including the U23 um, leader of the season, which is a really big deal. It means he's the fastest U23 guy in the world right now. Oh, yeah. Woo! Yeah. And to get there, Ben had to set some goals along the way. And um, I thought it would be really cool if he spoke on that. Sure. Yeah, hi. Thank uh, thanks for coming and, yeah, hearing all the important things I have to say. Um, <laughs> should be groundbreaking. But, um, no, so, yeah, I was going to just dis discuss a little bit about goal setting and, like, what how my relationship with it uh, as an athlete, like, you know, I'm a little younger, I haven't been on the World Cup as much as some of uh, the people here, but it's definitely a key aspect of what we do. And um, so for me, it's sort of, my pictures are really telling the story here, but it starts with like process goals. So, you know, every day throughout the year, if it's May, June, you know, summer, winter, there's, there's goals to be met that are like, you know, supporting your, big goals and Julia talks a lot about you know getting medal world champs Olympics being a community leader that sort of stuff that might be your outcome goal right but your process goals are what really get you there and they're they're the goals they're the things that you have to check off the list every single day so like for me you know it might be eating well or going to sleep early or you know stop putting my phone down before bed to help my uh, my REM cycle you know um, but yeah, in the winter, like I, I chose this picture because this is a picture of me on the on the left here, and my wax tech, and also Julia's wax tech. We share a wax tech, which is pretty awesome. 
but this guy Eli and we're looking at skis and we're trying to you know sort out which ski is going to be the fastest for the race and you know that's a uh, that's an important aspect of what of what we do and um part of my goal setting for the winter is to you know have a good like confident uh, understanding of my skis and you know that, that way I never feel like I'm making a shot in the dark or anything like that and I can really be on top of my mental game that way when it comes time to race I can go out and achieve my outcome goals which may be you know this year was the U23 bib which I was able to get which was cool um, but also it might be like top 30 in a race top 20 in a race something like that you know if you have all your things sort of in a row all your all your process goals checked off then you really can just like hit the start line and uh and capitalize so that's yeah that's kind of my experience with it and um i lean more on the process goals so my process goals are every single day all um all year round and then i may just have one or two outcome goals and you know the the beauty of the system is that even if you don't meet your outcome goals, which happens to all of us all the time, you know, we set goals that are too high or we get sick or whatever and we can't do it. You still are a better person because of it, because you, you, you did all your process goals all along the way and you know, you're, you're faster and you're stronger and you're happier because of it. So anyhow, it's a sweet system. And uh, I will give you guys back to Julia. <laughs> Thank you, Ben, for sharing. I think it was just a really great example because I see Ben every day um, coming to practice, working really hard, not just for himself, for the team. And it's the daily goals that you have control over and that you can achieve. You may not be able to control, oh, I want to win the Olympics. Sometimes that day doesn't go to plan, but you can control whether you show up every day and work towards your goal and work towards the things you can control. So I think there's a lot of power in that, no matter what your goal is. Their process goals are things you can achieve, and you have it a shot every day if you want to achieve a goal. Along that setting, once you have you dream big and you set some big lofty goals and small goals along the way, you have to build a support system. And I think this is often overlooked, and I've really come to value over the years, especially in this community. For me, it's not just a support system of, on the left, this is my physical therapist, Jen, who I've worked with for eight years. We're doing laser treatment in our really cool sunglasses. Um, but I had an injury and I needed a support system physically. I, my foot was hurt and I needed some laser treatment. So there's the physical support, like a doctor for Alzheimer's who might provide that expertise that you need. And then there's also the mental and emotional support. And this picture on the right is my family in Italy and pictured there is my parents, my sister, her husband, and my grandparents who taught me how to ski. And this was only a few years ago, early on with my grandpa's Alzheimer's diagnosis. And he was over 80 and still cross country skiing, which I think is really special. And I remember this memory really vividly because I was actually sitting out the World Cup because I got sick, but my family was there to support me no matter the result and we got to do a family ski instead. And so maybe I was sad that I couldn't race, but it actually ended up being an even more special day because I got to share that with my support system and just go out for a ski as a family. And I think that's what's so incredible about cross country skiing is that you can do it no matter the age and it's pretty gentle on the body and go at a slow pace, a fast pace and stay warm. Another part of my support system that I've come to love is being welcomed into this community. Eight years ago, I came to Stratton to join the SMST2 team and have not left since because I felt so welcomed, so supported. We hear all of the cheering across the big ocean from all of you in the winter and it really carries us throughout the winter and matters a lot. <laughs> Um, and so thank you for all you do in supporting us and our team because that's what keeps us going in the winter. When we get to the start line, we're proud to represent this community and hope we make you proud. Yeah, baby. And now I wanna invite up my teammate and friend, Jessie, because she has taught me so much over the years and she has taught me a lot about mental support system, and I thought she would be a great person to talk about this. Thank you. Yeah. 
believe it or not, she put up with three years straight on the road with me and still willingly gives me hugs. So <laughs> this is a great example of a support system at work. Um, but seriously, thank you all so much for coming today and for supporting us. And uh, support systems are why I'm here today. In general, not just on this team. Um, I'm really grateful for the Memory Clinic giving you all a copy of my book because the way we sold the book was talking about winning the Olympics, which is super fun. Going to the Olympics is actually a really great experience. However, I almost didn't get there at all. Um, when I was 18 and 19 years old, I was diagnosed with an eating disorder um, that came up through a multitude of reasons. And it actually came back up again for me this summer. It's been really hard and I've had to lean on my support system again and again throughout my life in many different ways. And so for me, a lot of the things that I learned about mental illnesses is that it can be really hard for people to understand. You know, when I fall down and I get road rash on my knees, which happens a lot, <laughs> currently growing new skin right now, it's easy for people to find empathy and sympathy and understand, right? We all have scrapes and cuts on the outside and that's, it's easy to see how the healing's going and you don't need to check in and ask people all the time because you can see it. But what happens when those scrapes and cuts are on your brain and when it's on the inside? It can be harder sometimes to understand or to have empathy for somebody or to know how to be there to support them. And so one of the biggest things I had to learn how to do was reach out to my support people for help. And so those people include my team, my coaches, my medical team, and my family, and most of all, my husband. Like, these are the people who are there and understand and see me for who I am, no matter if that's a day when you are winning the Olympics or a day when I am face planting into the dirt on my roller skis and need some help to get back up. Um, so for me, that's been what it's all about. So um, I hope you enjoy the book and learn some things. Um, I'm here for questions if you have them, but um, the biggest thing that I've learned that it, it is okay to need to lean on your people and it's okay to ask for help when you need it, whether that's help from your coach with your technique or help uh, from your family when you need a hug. So, thanks for having me. Thank you, Jesse, for sharing. I think it's, yeah, really telling and we've really learned a lot. There's so many support systems that you have around and I think this community is really amazing at that and I see that example time and time again. You're able to lean on the people around you when you need them and you're there for the people around you when they need you the most. And so looking at that, you have your support system. Now you have a big dream, a really big goal. You have a support system. Now you wanna go out and chase that dream. And for us, that looks like a lot of exercise for the most part. <laughs> Um, and that's training and for me my preferred method is to do it with others because again where I find my passion in skiing and in the outdoors is sharing that with others and being motivated by the people around me um, and I think that's what's really cool about just being physically active and living a healthy lifestyle I think it's a lot more motiv motivating when you have people holding you accountable or you have a friend hey let's meet up for an evening walk every Tuesday night and it makes it that much easier to get out the door if it's a hard goal to achieve. And so for me, it's a lot of roller skiing around here. You probably see us on the roads. Thank you for passing kindly and safely. So we stay safe. Um, last month I spent the month with Jesse and Sydney in New Zealand and we were skiing on snow. We also did our uphill run test. We do a lot of running and bounding up the Stratton Mountain, which is a lot of fun. Big group gravel rides. Um, I also really like to surf and spend time in water. I think it's really rejuvenating and challenges me in different ways. And mountain biking and strength training. It's really important to be strong as a skier and build the foundational blocks so that you are able to handle all of the racing and training throughout the year. And with all of that hard training, what's also really important is how do you fuel your body so you can keep going and recover really well. And so for me, I love spending time in the garden with my mom at home and growing things, eating the fresh things that grow seasonally. And so that's a lot of blueberry picking, basil, tomato salad, which we're fading away from now. But 
eating the food that really feeds your soul and your body and helps you recover. All of the hard training is just as important as recovery. You have to absorb that training. You have to give your body the energy it needs to keep going and eating really well. Often this is what my plate looks like. I think about, okay, do I have my carbohydrates? That's my quick source of energy. Do I have my protein to build up my muscle where I've broken it down? And do I have my fruits and veggies that really give me all the nutrients I need to live really healthy? And it can look really delicious and colorful. I love summer because we do a lot of grilling as a team. And this picture on the right is my Stratton teammates and I and my mom eating a really delicious meal with things we gathered from the garden and things that are grown locally. Um, and sharing that cooking together so that we have a really fun meal sharing food and stories Sometimes things don't go as planned <laughs> And I don't think I know anyone who's really chased a dream and haven't hit some speed bumps along the road I really like this photo because this was my first year on World Cup um, a few years back and we were doing some race preparations the day before, testing out the course, and I just flew out on the corner, and there's Jesse just dodging me in the corner. Um, and it might feel embarrassing to fail or you know, have a misstep or hit these speed bumps along the road, but I think that's what builds character and makes you a better person um, and makes you stronger in the end. So the next day, I learned how not to fall on my face during the race when it counted. <laughs> And that also means physical and mental injury. Jesse talked a lot about mental injury and physical may be more visible to see, but often with physical injury comes a lot of mental struggle as well. Some of my hardest times have been when I've been physically injured because what I love to do is be active. And so laying in a hospital bed with my arm cut open or being on crutches was really challenging for me. And that made me realize how important it is to have a support system around you in those harder times where you're not able to do what you want um, or love to do or the normal things that bring you joy. But with a good support system, hopefully you're able to overcome those obstacles in those tougher times. And I think they make you so much stronger. Adversity and resilience builds and makes you appreciate the simple things. Suddenly, oh, I get to go for a walk today and that's a really big deal. Or I get to run for the first time in three years. That's so thrilling and we take for granted. And so those obstacles may be really challenging at times, but I think are really crucial to making achieving your goal feel that much better. So this is a quote I wanted to share because I really like this mindset. It's my favorite quote and I also love water. And it reads, water does not resist, water flows. Water is not a solid wall. It will not stop you, but water always goes where it wants to go and nothing in the end can stand against it. Water is patient. Dripping water wears away a stone. Remember that, my child. You are half water. If you can't go through an obstacle, go around it. Water does. And so I like to keep this in mind when I reach an obstacle and it feels insurpassable, there's a way around it and you'll find a way. And maybe that path will actually make you learn something that you didn't realize or maybe puts you on a new path, on a new goal. And so along all these obstacles, I was able to achieve my Olympic dream, but the dream didn't end there. I actually had some lofty outcome goals, as Ben alluded to, that I did not achieve at the Olympics. And upon reflecting on that, I said, okay, I've reached this childhood dream, but I feel like I didn't reach my outcome goal. What, did I, what can I change in those process goals? And what I, reali what I realized was that I neglected part of my mental health in the process. For me, I realized I was so focused on the physical of training my body, doing everything right in training that I forgot to take the time to mentally re-energize and recover. And for me, that's spending time with my family. And so following the COVID year, this past year, I prioritized putting some of my mental health first before physical. And so I was still training, but I was out in California. I stayed a week longer when my family um, went out for my sister's wedding. This is my German family and found a balance of incorporating both because I ski fastest when I'm the happiest. And it's not just physical that makes you ski fast. More than anything, I think mental strength and happiness really has a long runway. And so I put that mental health first this year and have had a much better season and a much happier season. And 
what was extra special about it was that this year I got to go home after World Championships to see my grandparents. I decided to change my plan. I was supposed to keep going on World Cup and I said, I want to see my family. So I went and visited my grandparents in Germany and got to share that World Championship medal with my grandpa. My grandpa is not able to ski anymore, but he still was so excited to share this with me. And instead we went out for a Nordic walk. Who here knows what Nordic walking is? It's like skiing, but walking with poles. And so he may not be able to cross country ski anymore, but we were still able to go out for a walk and be active outside and celebrate the success together with the grandparents who taught me how to ski. And along the way, I've also learned how to help him in his Alzheimer's recovery. And that's getting him out the door. It may be really hard some days, and he may ask why 10 times, but when I do get him out the door, I can see the joy in his face, being able to exercise and move his body. And he might not be on skis, but we're out walking with poles. And I think that's really special, being able to share that with him. And that brings me to this team. And this team and this community here is what makes the journey all worth it and so incredibly special. And so I want to thank the Stratton team for all the support and all of you for coming out today. And hopefully you've learned a few things um, or have some takeaways about how to dream big, chase your goals, and support the people around you in whatever way they need and whatever the way you need. So thank you so much.